clashes between Israeli police and Muslim worshippers at the revered Al-Aqsa Mosque now threatening to spill over into open conflict between Palestine and Israel. Rockets have been launched from Gaza into Israel after a dispute over evictions in the East Jerusalem suburb of Sheikh Jarrah. That area has been under contention since Palestinians were allowed to live there after the establishment of the State of Israel in the 1940s. Let's unpack the various issues around this story. Now, we're joined on the line by Hanan Jarrah, the Palestinian ambassador to South Africa. Also joining the discussion via a video link from Jerusalem is Daniel Pomerantz. He's the CEO of an organization called Honest Reporting. To both of our guests, thanks very much for your uh, time this morning. I, I want to begin with you this morning, Hanan, and talk about the situation as it's been unfolding over the last few days in particular. The latest that, uh, information that I have in front of me uh, as of eight hours ago, nine people killed in Israel. That includes three children. Paint a picture for us of the conflict that's been unfolding, particularly in the compound around the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Thank you. Good morning, Michelle. Thank you uh, for hosting uh, us to clarify uh, the escalating situation in Palestine nowadays. Actually, all that you have been mentioning is only sentence for uh, one cause, one root of the problem, which is the Israeli occupation, the Israeli apartheid regime that uh, keeps systematically uh, controlling the Palestinian uh, people. The equation is easy, let's and let's uh, let. That's why the Palestinians engaged in the peace process 27 years ago. Unfortunately, uh, what Israel is trying to do since that time, and even before in 1948 when it occupied Palestine, is to change the reality on the ground. Um, the occupied East Jerusalem is an integral part of the state of Palestine. Since its occupation and illegal annexation in 1967, Israel, the occupying power, has systematically aimed at changing the legal, religious, and demographic uh, uh, status of um, uh, the city. By that's why we are now witnessing, and not only now, Every now and then, we are witnessing an escalation of uh, violence that is um, driven by the occupying uh, power Israel. Uh, that's why now we are witnessing the uh, forcible uh, displacement of Palestinian families from their own places, from their own homes, from their own neighborhood, Sheikh Jarrah. That's why we are now also uh, witnessing um, uh, um, uh, targeting Palestinian uh, worshippers, not only Muslims in Al-Aqsa Mosque, but also, if you were following correctly, uh, Palestinian Christians who were celebrating uh, Easter prayers also were um, prohibited from entering the uh, Holy uh, Church, the, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in uh, East uh, Jerusalem also. So what Israel is trying uh, to do is to change uh, the uh, religious, um, legal, and demographic uh, situation and status of the city of Jerusalem for the sake, unfortunately, to turn it into uh, a Jewish city uh, only. This holy city that was always open for the three religions is now turning by the Israeli apartheid regime to become a Jew uh, city only. And this is, according to international law and according to the Rome Statute, is considered a war crime. This is what Israel is trying to do now. And Sheikh Jarrah uh, issue and the, the raids on uh, the Palestinian worshippers in Al-Aqsa Mosque is only the, the symptoms, uh, only the, the uh, uh, causes uh, of um, a brutal uh, expansionist colonial regime that has to come to an end. I, I want to bring you in here, uh, Daniel. I mean, it's difficult to sort of explain away what's unfolded particularly. I mean, it's, it's one incident in a much broader uh, issue uh, and challenge between Israel and Palestine, but shooting and attacking worshippers at Al-Aqsa Mosque, how, how does one explain that away? It didn't happen. The number of deaths in Israel is zero. So let's correct that figure, first of all. The number of people killed, the number of Palestinian people killed in Israel was zero. The casualties that were hearing about come from Gaza, which is not in Israel. It's a separate enclave run by Hamas, an extremist militant organization. I don't want to use the word terrorist, but 
they are considered terrorists by the United States, the European Union, the UK, Canada, Australia, basically all of the Western world. They're firing rockets indiscriminately at Jerusalem. Has that, that means been the confirmed, Daniel? Because according to my understanding, it's not yet clear whether they, th these people who are reported to have died, whether they died in Israeli strikes or from Hamas rockets. Is, is that clarified as yet? It, 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 but first of all, it's absolutely confirmed that no Palestinian has been killed in Israel. That's confirmed. Uh, within Gaza, the, so the deaths we're hearing about are being reported by Hamas, which is not a credible organization, and it's the very same organization that's firing rockets indiscriminately at, at Jerusalem. Now, fortunately, those rockets are being intercepted by Israel's Iron Dome system, but the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is in the line of fire. The Western Wall, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, all of these Muslim worshippers are in the line of fire and are being protected from Hamas by Israel. But as you say, there is some question about the deaths that are reported to have happened in Gaza. Right now, the reported number by Hamas is up to 20, which is a terrible tragedy. Early indications is that at least one of those uh, incidents was a Hamas rocket that they were firing at Israel that landed in Gaza and killed three children, and we're waiting for confirmation on that. But it has been very common that Hamas rockets frequently uh, do land in Gaza because they fire uh, indiscriminately. But, you know, as you said, this is deeper than uh, simply a, a question of, of numbers or details. This is a question of how do we live together in peace? How do we get along? How do we get past this? I mean, is that a priority for the Israeli government? How do we live together in peace? What do you make of Janan's uh, comment? And, of course, she's not the first person to say so, but her description of Israel as an apartheid regime that's trying to change the religious, the legal status of Palestinians. Well, that's absolutely not true, and I think it's a... It's a very painful and horrible thing to say to people who actually suffered from apartheid. Israel is a country where Muslims serve in every capacity, in government, on the Supreme Court, and, and do every job and everything that Israelis do and have full legal rights. But more importantly, and this is what Ambassador Gerard left out, which, which I think is important, uh, we're talking about the uh, uh, dispute over the eviction of certain families. And these aren't abstractions. These are real people. It's the Scott P. Joani, Abu Hasna and Al-Khurd families who are living in, uh, who are living in Sheikh Jarrah, they um, gave an interview on May 4th in which they said, in which the Palestinian families said that they recognized that they've been living there for, in some cases, a couple generations. But before they were there, there were Jewish families living in those same homes for generations too. Now, this is a painful thing because I don't think, I don't believe, and I don't think anyone believes that just because you were there first means you should kick out anybody who comes after. But if the question isn't who was there first, how do we live together? If Jews were living there first and Muslims are living there now, what do we do? So over the past several years, these families worked out a compromise with uh, Israel and, and through the Israeli court system that would allow them to continue living there. And they report, <clears throat> excuse me, they reported on May 4th that they were forbidden by the Palestinian Authority government, the government that Ambassador Gerard represents. They were forbidden from accepting the compromise they were threatened with violence by their own Palestinian government, and their lawyers were instructed by the Palestinian Authority to reject the compromise without uh, consulting with the families. These are families that just want to live in peace with their Jewish and Christian neighbors. These are Jews that want to live in peace with their Muslim neighbors. And we have a, a government, uh, we have the Hamas organization, and we have the Palestinian Authority government actively stopping people from just trying to live together in peace. This may seem a radical thing to say, but... I think peace is easier than we realize. We don't even have to do much to create it. We just have to stop interfering with it. It's what the people already want and are already trying to achieve. We just have to stop preventing it.